This time on The Greats, the poet of the empire, Rudyard Kipling. Hollywood's brightest star, Judy Garland. German speedster, Michael Schumacher. And the greatest political leader of his time, John F. Kennedy. But first, Luciano Pavarotti. Luciano Pavarotti is better known for his soaring voice, but in 2001, the UN High Commission for Refugees awarded him the Nansen Medal, recognizing that he'd raised more money for refugees than any other individual. A letter like this, a citation like that, is definitely the best critic I received in my life. <laughs> Pavarotti was arguably the greatest tenor of the 20th century. Born in Moderna, Italy in 1935 to a baker who loved to sing, Pavarotti began singing as a child, but didn't take it seriously until 1954, when he began to study with Arrigo Pola and discovered he had perfect pitch. His first big break came in 1963, when Dame Joan Sutherland was looking for a tenor taller than herself to take on tour to Australia. At over six feet, Pavarotti fitted the bill. The duo performed 40 times over the two-month tour, and Pavarotti's reputation soared. From the 60s to the 90s, he performed at all the great opera houses, making his La Scala debut in 1965 as Rodolfo in La Boheme, in a revival of the famous production directed by Franco Zeffirelli. The following year, he appeared at Covent Garden's Royal Opera House's Tonio in La Fille du Regiment and earned the nickname King of the High Seas. In 1990, his fame achieved stratospheric proportions when he sang Puccini's aria Nessun Dorma from Turandot as the theme tune for BBC television coverage of the Football World Cup in Italy. He followed this by appearing in the first three tennis concert alongside Plácido Domingo and Jose Carreras on the eve of the World Cup final. The concert was held in the ancient baths of Caracalla in Rome and was a tremendous success, with the recording of the evening soon becoming the best-selling classical record of all time. He also sang many times with U2's lead singer Bono first sharing a stage with him in 1995 in order to raise money for victims of the Bosnian War. And in May 2003, the pair appeared at the 10th annual Pavarotti and Friends concert with the aim of aiding Iraqi civilians affected by war. Throughout his career, Pavarotti believed that music was an international communicator and that barriers were made to be broken. In the early 1990s, he began a series of Pavarotti and Friends charity concerts and CDs. By this time, his fame and popularity were unequaled, and Pavarotti appeared in a number of remarkable solo performances. In June 1993, over half a million people attended his performance in New York's Central Park, with millions more watching on television. I thought uh, I'm going to, to, to be retired already. Well, the voice is there, and uh, I think pretty good. And I, I really enjoy very much, even if uh, uh, the heavy the of, uh, of this performance was more than any other. As he approached his 70s, however, Pavarotti began to slow down, a victim of his ever-increasing girth and failing health. You, you, we are going to marry, you mean? Yes, uh, I hope we are going to marry. Uh, it's 10 years we stay together. I think it's time now, especially because uh, for our little daughter, Alice, I think it uh, would be correct. When, I don't know. I think after the summer, because now it's too much, you know, all in one, so we'll see. But only three years after marrying Nicoletta Mantovani, Pavarotti died of cancer on the 6th of September 2007. His legacy, however, remains via his recordings, his film performances and his charity work, all of which affected the lives of millions. The CDs featured a wide range of popular music stars, including Sting, Liza Minnelli and Stevie Wonder, and raised money for charitable causes, such as the children of Liberia and war-torn places like Kosovo.
three. 